Hello and welcome to Cutaneous Lymphoma Treatment video series presented to you by Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. My name is Neda Nikvak and I run the Dermatology Cutaneous Lymphoma Clinic at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia. In this fifth video of the six part video series, we talk about systemic therapies delivered in infusion centers. These treatments are generally reserved for patients with advanced disease or hard to control disease, including those with blood or lymph node involvement of mycosis fungoides. Let's talk about a unique treatment called extracorporeal photochemotherapy or extracorporeal photophoresis, ECP, that can be administered in specialized centers or blood banks. This treatment is very similar to hemodialysis in that the patient blood moves out of the body, receives a treatment, and then returns to the body. And the way it works is that blood is spinned or centrifuge to separate the white blood cells that include cancer cells from all other parts of blood. The white blood cells then receive the treatment, which involves being exposed to methoxylin followed by ultraviolet A. Eventually, both treated and untreated blood components are reinfused to the patient. ECP is commonly used in patients with blood involvement of CTCL. Patients are typically treated on two successive days, three to four weeks apart. The response rate to ECP goes up when it is combined with interferon or bexorotene. These treatments are discussed in video number four. And now we will talk about anti-cancer drugs that need to be administered in infusion centers. A new treatment recently approved by FDA for relapsed or refractory mycosis fungoides or Cesare syndrome is mogamolizumab. Mogamolizumab is an antibody that binds CCR4. CCR4 is a protein marker found on the surface of CTCL cancer cells. Mogamolizumab is effective in patients with blood involvement by mycosis fungoides. It is administered weekly for the first month, then every two weeks. Most common side effects are rash, fatigue, and diarrhea. While the patient is receiving mogamolizumab, we need to watch for development of mogamolizumab-associated rash which is a side effect of mogamolizumab treatment and must be distinguished from disease progression. Now we discuss romidepsin, which is from a class of medications called histone deacetylase inhibitors or HDAC inhibitors. We discussed an oral form of HDAC inhibitors called Vorinostat in video number four. And here we discuss an infusion form. HDAC inhibitors affect and modulate the DNA of cells, especially DNA of cancer cells. Ramidepsin is used in patients with CTCL in more advanced stages and those who have received at least another therapy. It is administered in three weekly infusions during each 28-day cycle. The less frequent administrations of romidepsin, such as monthly administrations or even administrations every six weeks, can be commonly utilized for maintenance therapy in patients who have already responded to the treatment. Romidepsin requires heart monitoring with electrocardiograms and blood tests for monitoring electrolytes, 
Some side effects include gastrointestinal symptoms and weight loss. Brintoximab vedotin is an antibody that binds CD30, another protein marker on blood cells. Upon binding to CD30, it goes inside the cell and delivers a dead signal to the cell it attaches. CD30 expression is commonly found in mycosis fungoides with large cell transformation and in anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Therefore, brentoximab vedotin is an appropriate treatment for both entities. Brentoximab infusions are generally every three weeks. And a common and limiting side effect for brentoximab is neuropathy, which is tingling sensation of hands and feet. Alemtuzumab is an antibody that binds a surfer marker called CD52, which is expressed on both B and T lymphocytes. Therefore, administration of alemtuzumab depletes blood of all lymphocytes. Alemtuzumab is used in patients with high blood involvement by CTCL to quickly reduce blood burden by disease. Patients on alemtuzumab must be carefully monitored and should receive antibiotics and antiviral therapy to protect their immune systems because they will not have any lymphocytes while they are being treated. And finally, chemotherapeutic drugs can be used in treatment of advanced stages of mycosis fungoides and in some subtypes of cutaneous B-cell lymphoma. Chemotherapy drugs kill dividing cells. Cancer cells tend to divide more quickly than normal cells, and this makes them target for chemotherapeutic drugs. Chemotherapy is used in advanced stages or in patients with relapsed or refractory disease. Patients on chemotherapy can develop many side effects, and they need to be carefully monitored by physicians. Commonly used chemotherapeutic drugs in CTCL include gemcitabine, liposomal doxorubicin, prolotrexate, and pentostatin. <laughs>